Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Max Cookery Lessons. I've made a soup this week, a nice and simple Mulligatawny soup from India, and it's really lovely. Hello, I'm making mulligatawny soup, uh, an Indian origin broth uh, with vegetables and chicken. Well, the chicken, I believe, would be what us uh, Brits decided to change it to um, when we culturally appropriated it from them. Thank you very much, India, for another beautiful dish that we could do what we want with. <laughs> so, we've got some chicken thighs, some vegetables, some apple, some rice, some chicken stock, we're going to put some yogurt in. It's going to be really, really really tasty okay this really is a very very simple dish to make and i think you're gonna love it so you see me peeling an onion and i'm gonna dice it so mulligatawny south india possibly sri lanka uh, we're going back to the time of the british raj in the 1800s and this was a very very popular dish sort of stew or soup and the uh, the british soldiers the britishers they loved it, but they asked a few little changes to be made, the addition of some meat, you know, whether it's chicken or mutton, you know, and uh, you know, they obliged, very obliging people down there. And so, yeah, Mulligatawny is this uh, Anglo-Indian effort, and I think some of the best foods are when two countries get together and they, uh, they combine a dish. I think the Indians did most of the work. We just come along and, you know... <laughs> took over as we do and anyway, so here you saw me uh, peeling some garlic after i'd chopped the onion and now i've got a romano pepper and i'm just going to de-seed that after i've cut it in half and i'm going to cut that into long thin strips celery would be very nice and this mushrooms would be nice you know feel free to go with what you want i've done a bit of research there seems to be like as usual so many different variations of recipes that i think you're safe to sort of put what you fancy in there but somebody in the comments somewhere will tell me how offended they are that I've uh, I've missed a key ingredient or put something in that shouldn't be there anyway taking my time here to dice up the vegetables nice and small and evenly because this is a broth this soup is not going to be pureed at the end it's going to be left so I wanted all the bits and pieces in there to be nice and small what you see me doing now, I've got cold water in that bowl. I'm just putting a bit of lemon juice in there because I'm going to peel the apple. I'm not, uh, sorry, I'm going to dice the apple. I'm not going to peel it. Um, but I don't want the flesh to start turning brown while I wait. So a tiny bit of acid in the cold water will prevent the apple from discolouring. So you saw me just cut it into quarters after I topped and tailed it. And then remove the core, cut it a couple of times in that direction. And then I'm, I'm probably making those dice bits a little bit bigger because the apple is going to break up a bit. It's going to sort of shrink. And there we go. So apple into the cold water. We're ready to start cooking this thing. It was really as simple, I told you. Onions into a medium pan with a, a medium heat, sorry, uh, with a pan. And uh, yeah, just get those vegetables in there. You could have just put them all in one bowl, but I wanted to make it look like that for my video. Crush the garlic. Add a bit of salt to help the vegetables start. Uh, that was the curry powder and some chilli powder, a couple of bay leaves, and some bits of thyme. Sometimes I'm in the mood for getting some whole spices and toasting them in my skillet and smashing them up in my pestle and water. And sometimes I just get a tub of curry powder. It's up to you. Some butter went in there that's optional. It was not in the recipe, but I wanted it to be better. So I put a bit of butter in it. That was chicken stock, followed by cold water as well just to top it up because this will be simmering for a wee while and I've got the lid on to start so that's at about 10 minutes of really low gentle simmering in with the rice and in with the apple and I'm just gonna see give the chicken a prod just to see now it's nowhere near ready yet so about another 20 minutes required I took the lid off just before I filming again there and I do want this to reduce a little bit but there you go so that's half an hour of gentle simmering the chicken thighs are ready of course you could use different cuts of chicken but I think the thigh is king 
that's where the flavour comes from. So I'm just going to let that simmer away while I take this scalding hot chicken and try to get it off the bone and break it up with the fork. And what I do is when I touch this with my fingers, I think oh, I'm going to leave that. I'll let that just calm down for about five or ten minutes. So now it's just warm, much easier. Because what you need to do here is this is the point where you've got to be really careful and fussy. If I leave any bits of gristle or un, you know, unpalatable pieces in it, my lady she really hates it. So I'm always really nervous. I think okay, I want to make sure I get all those unpleasant bits out: connective tissue, gristle, bone. Anyway, and then just uh, get to work with a couple of forks and shred this into sort of manageable sized pieces. And I think, well, some of them are a bit big, so I'm just going to roughly, really roughly chop it with my big knife. And that's the chicken done. Bay leaves have done their job. Thank you, bay leaves. Sterling work. Yeah. Back in with the chicken. Now, you could have this dish quite often with I'm using yogurt as you can see here a big spoon in now but keeping a bit for garnish because it looks nice on the pictures uh, cream coconut milk I think traditionally it would have been coconut milk and that would have been coriander or cilantro but you know I, my missus told me the day it stops tasting like soap is the day we're allowed it again I had a final taste and a season Double check here again are we happy we're happy it is time to serve this thing Selecting a bowl of your choice. And uh, yeah, however much you want, really, I suppose. And if yours is a bit thick, you can always add a bit more water. Or if it's a bit too thin, you can always just cook it on a little bit longer and let it reduce you know, to the consistency that you like. That's the thing I like about broths. So there we go, in a bowl. There's that little bit of garnishing yogurt. And that garnishing pretend cilantro or coriander. And that's it. I told you it was simple. Anyways, back over to me for the tasting. Right then, malagatoni, a soup I've made many, many times before. Never put apple in it before though, so this is interesting for me. It's delicious. Little, maybe extra freshness from the apple. Feel free to add that, take it away. It's your soup at the end of the day. You can put whatever you want in it, but mmm. Very, very nice broth. Not too much rice in there because I didn't want it to be a rice dish. I just wanted the rice to add a little bit extra, a little bit of body, a little extra substance. This would be great with some naan bread or pit, um, yeah, naan breads or maybe babadom, something like that. But quite honestly, this is just beautiful. And I would say the freshness of it with the apple makes it suitable for perhaps a summer's day as well as like a quite wintry dish. It's very versatile. Oh my goodness, it's lovely. Mm. Give Malagatoni a try. I think you'll really like it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching our Comets Cookery Lessons. Any recent new subscribers well, hello, I really appreciate you coming over. And um, catch you soon. Bye.